If you're going to do dirt, can't leave a stain, <laughs> right? You out here leaving breadcrumbs, that's craziness. It goes to show you how silly men are when it comes to stepping outside of their relationship. Can't control your horny. What's going on, fam? This is K.R. Jones of the Off The Strength Podcast, and I am here to tell you to like, listen, subscribe, and if you're feeling freaky... Visit offthestrength.com. That's where you can go and get more information on us. That's where we can link, we can build, we can connect, and let's make this thing work. Have you ever come across trash people with good causes? I mean, I need you to elaborate a little bit more. Like, what are we talking? I'm talking about causes that you would be down to support. But the person itself. And then you meet the person behind the cause, and they are a trash individual. Okay, I see what you did there. I can't go deep into the details of it, because right. it's such a specific description. Just change the names. No, you will find out who <laughs> it the is place. immediately. Know. All right. But we have been down with the Brothers of Climbing before. BOC. You know what I mean? So I'm a climbing individual. If I saw somebody with a cause about getting people like us to be involved in that, I would go out of my way to pull up and try to understand what was happening. He means black. Yes. <laughs> That's the B in B-O-C. Yeah. So, it's black with a capital K, apparently, yeah, is what I've heard. Come on. I'm, I'm here for it, man. But not all my skin folk be my kin folk. That part. I came into an establishment yesterday that I also we have had conversations about okay. in our neighborhood that we would go to and support and celebrate. It wasn't anybody that was at that establishment that, you know, was uh, committing a crime, but apparently they had a little special event in there, man. And I'm telling you right now, I walked in, humbly, there was four people in this whole place. He says, did you buy a ticket? <laughs> There's four people in here. <laughs> I just walked past, I saw the door was open. You don't get a ticket, you gotta get out. <laughs> First of all, I'm here. <laughs> second, that's, a of, that's a lot of hostility. Second, there's nobody in here, and I didn't even hear about... My, what's your name? My name is Tony. You gonna talk to me like a person before we start to go? Anywhere you love else. that introduction because <laughs> people be stepping over the line, man. Letting people know they're talking to Tony the Tiger in yeah, person. And I was like, you know I mean? actually, hold on. Let me let me let you know. <laughs> it's like I I know I came in here nice, but it could go left real quick. Oh, I'm sorry. This is my organization, and this is what we're about. So you want to buy a ticket? No, I don't want to buy a ticket to your trash ass <laughs> organization. <laughs> but I wish y'all well. <laughs> What's good, everybody? What's good? <laughs> Welcome back to yet another episode of Off the Train. We're giving you the inside look into all things wellness culture. I'm a trader called Tony, and of course, with me, I have a gentleman of extraordinary league. K.R. Jones is in the building. That's right, folks. We are back. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of all type from near and far, you are now in store for a treat because it's the return of the variety show. That's when we give you our best foot forward. So hopefully okay. you take your best foot forward. You do that two-step, that tango, whatever it is you need to do to make it on through the week. With the best goddamn wellness information available. Yeah, yay. My bad, Brother Jones. My blood was boiling. I was getting a little hostile. You've been stumbling the past couple of times, It bro. was a hostile gospel, man. I first was in there. First, you don't succeed. You know? Try and try again, yeah, bro. Pick yourself up first. Well, tell me how you picked yourself up this week, man. What man, was going I have on? God damn it. The way your blood is boiling, mine is at that same temperature solely because I am still in jury duty. It ain't nothing else I can report on. I'm still there. It's trial Week three, I'm juror number five. Juror number three, I got beef with. The bitch is sick, <laughs> right? She keep coughing up a lung every day. And I swear, if I had different reproductive organs, she would have got these hands a long time ago. But I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to... Address that at all. That sounded like the act of violence that we gonna might have to cut right out the episode, Kyle. So yeah, you had a hard week is what you're saying. That part, you know, it, it's been one of those. It, it's my civic duty, but at this point, it's turned into a full-time goddamn job, and I'm tired of it. Man, uh, unfortunate, my brother. Uh, I wish I had a better reporting for you this week, but uh, you know what? The week crap was a little up and down and tumultuous on my side as well. Uh, I'm going to stay with the good, Kyle. Okay. That's what I'm committed to. Hassan, can you take me up a little bit on the headphones? Put some treble in it. Yes, yes. Uh, the good this week, my man, I got a chance to catch up with my first gym partner ever that I had. Uh, my boy, Mauro, uh, that we used to work out in Gold's Gym, who actually bought me into Equinox. I got a chance to see that brother first time in like seven years or something like that. So that's that was love. cool. Got to break bread with him, catch up real quick, you know, just learn about all the life that's happened. And these last four years, I forget how much actually has happened. So you see people making huge jumps in life, man. So that was cool. Got to catch up with uh, Tara, who I didn't know that she was the trainer in that Megan video. 
uh, we're making the stallion is teaching everybody on a Nike app. That makes sense. Yeah, it does. And I was like, oh yeah, small world, super small world. See how close we are, tight knit inside of the community that's actually out here moving numbers, man. And last but not least, I saw Jamila from Brooklyn T last night. Okay. Brooklyn T, we had famously pull up to our live show when we was tagged up with that uh, Canadian company. And I was out there sipping the you juice. You sipped a couple too many. Or the tea, if you will. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The boozy tea had my brother Jones on lean, man. Yes, sir. In the best way possible. But they have been doing amazing stuff, bro. Some of their commercials that they've been pushing out, seeing them getting into like the bigger franchises out there. So I just had to salute everybody on the uh, Brooklyn T side real quick, man. And the uh, other good light that I had coming in this week, Brother Jones. I really have been putting a lot of time into these classes, bro. Okay. I got to talk to you a little bit about my learning path and trajectory. So I was with the small business uh, team of uh, NYC. They're offering classes in the cannabis industry specifically. So the uh, Small Business Association has this whole program that's out. And Kyle, what I'm telling you, it's like class 101, like science class for weed. It's insane. You know, they're actually breaking down everything that you could possibly need. And I'm like, hold on. They ain't talking about the block and what Ray Ray got. You know what I'm saying? Yes, they are. <laughs> it's like, because Ray Ray's about to be real jammed up. Right. Real quick. They ain't talking about that sour, sour, sour he got. <laughs> they're about to jam everybody up on that oh, front, man. So that's what I Speaking of which, we can't be that enamored inside of a culture and not know what's going on there, man. So the class was back in session. I was like, I might as well ding, learn ding. Yeah. what's going on on this front, man. So... Kyle, when I tell you that there's lawyers in this class, there's venture capitalists, there's legacy vendors like Ray Ray that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. That's the new term that we're giving him. Legacy vendors. <laughs> legacy vendors. Yeah, because he had a lifetime membership <laughs> at Costco. And he went away to college, you yeah, know? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, and then there's new entrepreneurs like yourself that's trying to step into this arena, man. I'm telling you right now, Brother Jones, New York City is looking to make a multi-billion dollar push into the cannabis industry. So it was something that I had to keep my finger on the pulse for because I ain't going to be hearing about too many other people making all this money and I'm not going to be in the same room, man. And it got me to thinking about, really, how do you learn and add to your skill set in all of your areas of interest, right? So I really wanted to know, like, sometimes people outside of school, they don't look to actually add tools to their bag and try to learn. I got to ask the professional this week, my man, like, how are you invested in your learning and what's that process look like for you? And... You know, what's some of the things that you look to build your knowledge on as a wellness professional? It's a great question, brother. I appreciate you. The first thing that comes to mind is the exposure element. You put yourself in that position and we're receptive to this new learning environment. And that's really what it has to be is it has to be decisive enough for you to know what your actual interests are and then for you to follow up because that opportunity presented itself. Then all you did was show up and meet it. For me specifically, in my case, which I'll definitely be diving into a little bit later, but when it came time for me to pivot outside of the gym after the pandemic, it was like, well, what do I want to do next? I don't really want to be back in the gym. I did the corporate side of things. Corporate wellness was draining me. So I wanted to put myself into more artistic pursuits. And that's how I ended up at the mural painting company. Now, that was a whole new lesson in everything. If you look at the paint world and the wellness world from the side of a personal trainer or corporate wellness, that's apples and oranges. It's complete different things, even though they're both jobs. Nonetheless, me allowing myself to be a beginner in this new space and just being open and receptive and being a sponge to my new environment allowed me to have a structured place to learn right it allowed that space for me to develop if you don't create that space for your development then you'll be closed off to a lot of opportunities man so you took your sweat equity and you put it into a new skill and that new skill once you learned it it was still sweat equity it was just on the other side it was yeah. like i'm not lifting weights no more i'm putting together suspended scaffolding hanging off the side of a skyscraper in the middle of the city right and that skill that you picked up doing that it leaves and lives with you once you leave that job. 100%. We're going to build on that later. Why are we always on the same page, fam? You be reading my notes. That's what you be doing. I'll be reading you your be mind, You be studying Kyle. my plays. <laughs> you you know? thought that the meta glasses stopped uh, with just the recording and taking pictures. Stop it right I now. I full mind reading <laughs> capabilities, Kyle. Sliding out of that. <laughs> yes. Technology is coming, Kyle. Don't I'm get jammed you know. up like they did Mel. <laughs> you start reading what women want, then nope. we're going to be somewhere else. You know? <laughs> we're going to talk about some of the good. We're going to talk about some of the bad. 
And we're going to talk about some of the ugly this week, and it's damn sure going to be some ugly parts. That's right. It's time for this week's episode of Rip from the Headlines. And Brother Jones, I got to start from Fit Tech Magazine coming out right now. Now, Brother Jones. Okay. Techno Gym has launched a checkup assessment AI personal training tool. Nope. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's a fresh strike. Kyle, this tool is now going to be on display at this year's Ursa, which just happened. Not Ursher, like gotcha. you said. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I got the distinction down packed now. And there we go. And this new assessment tool is uh, going to be looking at things like your physical metrics, but also testing your cog- cognitive abilities. And it's also going to be able to tell what your actual biological age is by how you perform on these different things. So... With this new checkup app, they're looking to try to not just think about what's going on for your physical performance, but as I told you before, all of these companies are moving further and further into other aspects of this health continuum. What's your thoughts on hearing about the checkup app from Technogym, my brother? You just laid out a lot. And for the lay people out there, this is why I come in to try to close that gap a little bit. So Techno Gym, let's start there. That is a company that mainly manufactures workout equipment, stuff in like machine work that you would see at like a YMCA, yes. a Blink, things of that nature. The the Preacher Curl machine that's assisted. Yeah. So they make, uh, if I could give you a little bit of background on sure. that. It's an Italian company okay. that manufactures not only selectorized weight training uh, machines, but they also make cardiovascular training machines, yes. and they also make free weights as well. You know why I know that, Kyle? Tell us, Tony. You know why I know that, Just Kyle? Just go, go ahead and stretch it out. Because when I say I did everything in fitness, uh-huh. there's not a lot of people who went from the physical fitness side to actual working in the manufacturing inside of health and wellness. Tell them why you're mad, son. I'm mad because <laughs> the former CEO of Techno Gym was my boss. <laughs> When I tell you that the former CEO from Techno Gym was my boss, and I was a third employee at another company that Techno Gym ended up suing and shutting down, <laughs> I had to learn everything that they had going on because I too was going to be called into some legal death position <laughs> in the lawsuit as a number three employee. <laughs> How is your relationship with that now? How are you coping with such? I'm still angry. <laughs> I feel like I should have been at the top a long time ago, damn it. <laughs> so we're going to put a pin in that right now. <clears throat> We'll revisit that a little bit later. Still standing. Still strong, girl. In our therapy session at the end of this week. But to build on top of that, this is hardware, if you will, right? Yes. Like, this is physical equipment. You're now telling me that they are creating a AI machine that is going to do the job of what? A person or a doctor, a physical therapist. There's three different types of people that you would get this information from in life that you are now getting in AI software. Yeah. No, it's a hard no for me. I'm a, it's, I wish I had more thumbs to give it more thumbs down. I, I, I'm not here for it. Kyle, you know what? I knew that this was coming in 2016, Kyle. It is now 2024 for the record. See, I'm putting things on the record now. I like it. I've been in court a lot, so, you know, I know what's up. For Objection! <laughs> That's how you feel. <laughs> Sustain. <laughs> My bad. I, just, I appreciate it's what you're coming in with. <laughs> you know why I know that, though, Kyle? Why do you know that? Because I, too, was almost going to get called into this deposition <laughs> in 2016 for the company that they sued that was doing the same thing. Ladies and gentlemen, you may get a subpoena. <laughs> In which you have to appear in court yeah. and tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. As a third employee for a company that was also doing something very similar. Please spell your name for the for the court recorder here. Speak very slowly. I've been ringing a bell for this stuff for a long time because I've seen it. I was on the front line, and people don't really understand what I'm saying when I'm telling you that this has been part of the play for the longest uh, part of the game, Kyle. Now we're here. Now we are here, and it's just happening faster and faster. So the programmers are going to continue to roll out new features as the app gets more adoption. And like Kyle was mentioning, this is a company that has ubiquitous coverage in most large commercial facilities. So they are going to be able to get this information from most gyms out there in the world. So you do with that what you will. And Kyle? Pause. (laughs) I'm going to stay overseas for a little bit. I'm going to talk about something else. (laughs) I don't know what's wrong with you, bro. (laughs) But um, speaking of how this line is getting a little bit blurry from the technical side to the health side, there is a push going on in the UK where the government is going to allow doctors to review your phone data to be able to make an intervention in your in cases for your health. So they're going to be able to take a look 
at all of the data that you have inside your phone, particularly how much you're moving, what your exercise uh, is attached to, and maybe even some of the patterns that you do to decide whether or not doctors can make an intervention for you. Now, they're saying that they're doing this for the benefit of people's health because the obesity epidemic on a global level has hit an all-time high, Kyle. So that is something that tracks. We talked about that last week, right? How do you feel about the government actually starting to allow some of these things again from the health tech side to start to be moved into legislation now where your doctor can kind of look into your phone to see, hey, you didn't walk as much as you said you were supposed to walk or you didn't get up and get your heart rate up as many times as you were supposed to. You're not drinking as much water. Like, what's some of the thoughts that you have when you hear about legislation like this passing? It sounds bad, first thought, but I'm thinking about who that population is. That You're talking to a population specifically that has doctors, yes. that has primary care physicians. I come from a group of people that may not have primary care physicians. But you know what they all have? What? Phones. They do all have phones, <laughs> right? But in order for a doctor that I have a rapport with to go through my phone, I would need to have a rapport with a doctor first. Yeah, do you know what telehealth is? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So in that, this is why I'm really trying to punctuate this kind of situation, because the easier you make it for somebody to make that kind of assessment, the easier being a doctor is going to be, the easier having access to a doctor is going to be. So there's a long tail to this that in some cases, this is what they're trying to spin. Hey, you're going to get better health care coverage uh, in large. Now, if the front side is saying that. I'm going to have to ask you at what cost so that you might have to pay a very little amount up front to get this health care coverage because every teledoctor will now have access to all your telephone health. Therefore, they'll be able to make better assessments and they're going to have better access to just all of your information. So, again, you do with that what you will, Kyle. <laughs> we will then meet again at that corner of does more information necessarily yield better results? Yes, it does. It's just who are those results for? So you got to ask in that equation, it, it most certainly will yield better results, but it might not also always yield better results for the patient side of the equation. And it might not yield better results for the doctor side. It will yield better results for whoever's collecting the data. That's the game, man. That's the game that we're playing, brother. We are robots. <laughs> we getting closer and closer to it, man. Um, speaking of something that's super robotic inside the gym space, bro, you ever try to cancel a gym membership? Oh, yeah, for sure. What was the process like? Oh, I had to pull up in person and, and, and say my name and put my chest forward and ruffle, <laughs> ruffle some feathers. You got to go above and beyond to cancel a gym membership. Oh, 100%. You either have to have some kind of physical ailment. I need to speak to your manager. Right. Oh, you are the manager? <laughs> I need to speak to the owner. <laughs> now. I wanna, who's that on the logo? That's Bring why I want to talk planet to planet down here. <laughs> <laughs> so you you've dealt with some yeah. kind of issue with that. Now, there's also going to be a case that's in court being tried uh, to try to make that whole cancellation process a little bit easier. What's your thoughts on hearing the uh, again, thoughts around how health club memberships have predatory practices in their cancellation policies? At this point, I just suggest signing up with a fake name. You know what I'm saying? Just go ahead. <laughs> you can't do that. You John David now. You know what I'm saying? John David with a burner. Uh, That's card. it. So so that when you fade away, you just end the account and all that, and you just because sometimes it just might not be worth it, bro. I'm gonna say that again for this next segment as well. Sometimes it might not be worth it. Kyle, these last two things that I want to touch on is going to be when keeping it fit goes wrong. Okay. Now the first thing is going to be straight off the presses. This is in Men's Journal. And we're going to talk today about, Kyle, how a woman learned that her husband was cheating on her through the fitness app Strava. Oof. So now infidelity is not one of the key metrics that Strava tends to track. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't think so. It, it tracks a lot. They look at the heart rate. You know, they look at your blood pressure sometimes. I mean, they got, got location. They do have location. Okay. And when you are not really operating the way that you say you're operating, mm -hmm. having your location settings Tag in your fitness app is always going to lead you into a little bit of a sticky situation, Kyle. So Not sticky. He was leaving breadcrumbs. He That's was leaving he was all leaving. kind of crumbs. He was leaving a little bit more than that. So, Kyle, uh, apparently this woman was able to see exactly where her husband was running versus where he said he was running. Mm. And she started to notice that in each one of his runs that he started off at their house, he would end that run exactly where he would uh, meet a co-worker <laughs> to go to work sometimes. <laughs> now, this co-worker was somebody that he said never had any issues with, never had anything going on with, but the wife knew something was up. 
mm-hmm. because she he's asked her to stop coming out and run with her in particular. So he not only was showing the route that he was running was going right back to this woman's house, but he also asked his wife to not run with him. How do you feel about this brother getting jammed up on Strava, man? If you're going to do dirt, can't leave a stain, <laughs> right? You out here leaving breadcrumbs. That's craziness. Uh, it goes to show you how silly men are when it comes to stepping outside of their relationship. Can't control your horny. Yeah, it's right back to the beginning every time. It's like you you out here, you're breaking up the routine. You tell your main lady, hey, I don't want you out here no more. You slow, don't run with me. You slowing up my pace. I need to go elsewhere. That's strike number one. Strike number two, fam, the location. And, and then you you passing it as the carpool. This your work wife that you now crossing real paths with? Like, man, this is ugly out here. Congrats to that young lady. She deserves more. She's got a couple million follows on uh, TikTok, and she might be uh, getting some DMs after that. <laughs> oh, for sure. She about to be running elsewhere. She going to be figuring it out, man. But the last thing I got to touch down on, Kyle, this is going to be a tragic story, so I want to make sure I leave some space in there but it's still in that hole when keeping it fit goes wrong kyle a fitness influencer at the age of 23 has died after falling into a ravine while filming content also for tiktok now kyle people like to go outside they like to hike you know you like to get a little bit of forest bathing in you know embrace the sun but you gotta know where you're going yep when you're starting to do this and you gotta pay attention especially if you're going to be in areas that are a little bit more difficult to traverse. You know, if you're hiking out in the wilderness and you don't know what's going on, the last thing you need is to have like a full on film session and you get turned around and you get lost into that a certain section. So Kyle, a Greek influencer has gotten lost and fell into a ravine out in Italy. And the area that he was hiking in was already banned from people uh, to be allowed to go in there at all because the rocks are super slippery. You can't get out once you fall in. And they know that this was going to happen. But again, for the likes, the subscribes, everything else that goes on, people are trying to get as much off on this camera as they can. And sometimes it has some unfortunate circumstances, bro. What's your feelings on hearing this story? That's tough, man. Rest in peace to the homie that we lost through that. But uh, the old adage, fam, doing it for the gram, doing it for the vine, is is plenty of people that have subscribed their way into no longer being here, you know? So I would suggest that when there are environmental agencies that study the infrastructure in which people don't go to and take the time to put up a sign or give you a warning that you should not hey, do, don't this, do this. <laughs> You probably shouldn't do that, regardless of how good of a hiker or a climb you have. Like, or how good the view is. You got to climate gotta, change. Yeah, right. Like that's that's a fact. There, there could be some type of danger. It could be wildlife danger. You don't know, but you risking it, and, and that's the ultimate price to pay. Man, not always worth the vista, brother. That's going to be a little bit of the good, the bad, and the ugly from my side of rip from the headlines. What you got for the folks this week, man? Man. That was ugly. We're going to go into some good first. So I got two instances in the good. First being, I got to shout out my brother, Lawrence Bernie. This is like family man. Uh, since high school, we go back. And he's the founder of True Laurels, in which he does different writings and different articles and things of that nature. Okay. So he just wrote an article for Tierra Whack for... Um, it's in Vulture. Vulture.com is like where the article is. And Tierra Whack just dropped her new album called Worldwide Whack. And it's just one of those things where he's always covered music, but he's like literally on the beat. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. to see my homie who like I had writing classes with in high school write for these publications is always going to be love. He wrote, Salute. Yeah, he wrote for... Um, GQ, he covered uh, Stavos. He's a comedian. I can't pronounce his last name. I know name. exactly who you're talking about. Heavy set dude with the glasses. Mm-hmm. He's from Baltimore, actually. So the fact that we being from Baltimore got to cover another Baltimorean's growth into uh, industry, into entertainment, it was beautiful. So I had to shout that out. That was I real good. I support that, man. I didn't know that y'all referred to yourselves as Baltimoreans. Yeah, that's how it is. I didn't know that's that. That's what it is. That's the town, bro. You Baltimoreans. Know? If you know, you know. I'm a, I refer to myself as a Baltimorean Brooklynite. A ba- okay. You see what I did there? That's a lot of bees. 
Now, speaking to the bees, I'm going to add another B into the equation. Have you heard of Bomb Magazine, Tone? I know you're well-read. Are you saying B-A-L-M? No, as in Bomb, as in B-O-M-B, which I probably shouldn't you be should saying. You should not say that. <laughs> We're live on the block that we the rock. Right now. Uh, <laughs> Objection. <Somebody. laughs> Overrule. Going to right? hold you in contempt. <laughs> yeah, for saying something like that. So that, that's the magazine that I'm talking about, the B-word magazine. <laughs> yeah. I bring this up because I had an encounter with a young lady, right? This young lady's name is Naomi Jackson. She stopped me in front of my building mm. on some on some smoking shit. She was like, hey, you live here? I was like, oh, what's up? Who asking? Who want to know? Like, and it turns out she was actually a writer, and she was writing a story, a fiction story about Baltimore. And this fiction story, it talks about a journalist who is supposed to be profiling her childhood frenemy but instead finds herself looking for revenge. Mm. And it has been one of those reads, fam. Like, to meet a person in real life and then for them to be like, oh, I'm a writer, here's this thing that I wrote about your hometown. I was like, all right, that's kind of weird, but cool. And uh, it's been interesting. It's very... Very black, very uh, Zane Chronicles, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like it. We ain't really getting into the sex just yet. You know, I ain't finished it. I was like, oh, it's getting a little hot in here. Let but me, you know it's there. Let me, let me loosen my collar up. I know it's coming, you know, but it's one of those. I'm like, oh, wow. So I've, I've really been well read this week. And that was the only good that I could find. I've been offline and been in person. I wanted to leave with that. Okay. Now we're going to slide into the bad tone. Now, when I talk about the bad... When I just say car jujitsu, nope. What comes to mind? I don't even know if you landed that word all the way. <laughs> car jujitsu sounds insane. When I insane. say car jujitsu, what comes to mind, Tony? Talk to the people. What are you looking at right I'm now? I'm looking at what looks to be an attempted a hard R. I don't know what, what's going on. We can't say that word, <laughs> but it looks like. Uh, it looks like a date going horribly wrong <laughs> inside this car with I'm two guys. I'm here to tell you that this is an actual sport called car jujitsu. He's in trying which to choke a man with a seatbelt. His name is the seatbelt assassin. No, nope. this is what he goes by. I That's his moniker. I can't condone in this. In which he uses the seatbelt as a tactic to choke and eventually make his opponent tap out because this is jujitsu just in the front seat of a car. Why? I don't know why this is a sport or why people would cover such a thing. I just want to know your immediate thoughts on this. There's a referee standing on the outside really trying to call whatever is legal versus not legal in this mimic assault. That's it's what it looks sport. like. It is film. <laughs> this is not There's a sport. There's a referee there. It's a real thing. This is what happens when you start dissolving what words used to mean. Because this, <laughs> this, is, this is not a sport. It's jujitsu in a car. I mean, listen, if I was auditioning for Taken 5 or something like that, I might feel like this is needed. You would get your seatbelt game up? Yeah. <laughs> Other than that, it looks insane. All right. I just wanted to hear your immediate thoughts on car jujitsu. We're going to slide into the ugly tone. That wasn't ugly enough? That wasn't ugly <laughs> I enough. I just watched a man choke somebody with a seatbelt <laughs> and said it was a sport. You might need that if you ain't got the ejecto facto cuz in the whip to get him out like on Yo, Tyrese and Fast and Furious. If my Uber ride ends in one of us choking each other with, with a seatbelt, seat. it's going horribly wrong. <laughs> We've made the wrong turn. It's getting crazy out here, fam. You never know when you might need to car jujitsu. I just want to put it on your radar that I'm here for it as a driver. Now, if, if need be. If we could package this as a self-defense class. Of course it is. I think this can make sense. Why wouldn't it be? We might be able to take this back. You Wait take this in driving school. All right. <laughs> car jiu-jitsu. <laughs> right after you get your permit. All right. You got car jiu-jitsu. Four-week lesson. <laughs> Call is a black belt. How to use a seatbelt. Not belt. an actual black belt. He just drove a black car. So. <laughs> well, the black belt is a seatbelt. Stop it. We're getting off topic. That's the off and off the strength. We're sliding into the ugly this week. And the ugly is going to be a food crime that I'm here to report on once again. Now, Brother Tone. Famously, we would know you to be a coffee drinker. I sent this to you earlier in the week. Would you take coffee poured into a green pepper no. for an espresso? I would never. And I don't understand why. Like, certain things you just don't need to do just because you found out that you could do it. Yeah. Like, what flavor are you going for? It's a, it's a green pepper coffee. Yeah, I, why? Like, you don't need to do it. Those, with latte art on top. So it's milk in there, too. Not only do peppers give you gas, but you're throwing milk into this coffee that's already a bean that's going to make you do what it need to do? I really don't understand who wanted that. Who elected for that to happen? It's like, at some point, somebody's brain said, you know what, these hold water. 
I could stuff a pepper or I could put coffee in the pepper. Stuffed peppers give you gas. I don't care what type of protein you put in there. You have a stuffed pepper, it's, there's something else that's coming out stuffed. <laughs> is... I want you to know that. And you mix that with the coffee bean and some milk, that's like a digestive recipe. That's a that's a B word for your digestive system. <laughs> I'm going to leave it that all the way alone. <laughs> that was ugly. It definitely was. So I'm going to leave that segment alone. And we gonna go into raising the bar this week, Tom. You see how I get all worked up, so I gotta I gotta calm it back down, bring us bring us back to a nice mellow point, you know. Take a break, smooth it out a little bit. Take it to the bridge. Now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners from all type, from near and far, you are now in store to raise your bar. Now, brother Tom. Yes, sir. I'm gonna give you two phrases out here that came heavy for me this week. First phrase is gonna be tying a knot. Second phrase is gonna be closing the loop. When you think of both of them, what comes to mind? I want to follow up with a response to you, but first I'm going to ask you, like, as a friend. What's up, man? Like, how did this come up? Listen, bro, <laughs> I'm, your uh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm going to walk you through it. But this is just how I want to start it off, man. When I think of tying a knot and, and I'm just again, and closing the loop. Again, I'm advising you as a friend. What's up, man? As somebody who has seen Confidant. threats. I've seen somebody make threats to you for oh, not for speaking sure. about this in the right context. So I just want to give you that out right there. You sure you want me to answer that? Yes, sir. Let's do it. So tying the knot and closing the loop. In, in, in that context, kind nah, of sounds we're like... We're not talking necessarily marriage. We're just talking metaphorically. Okay. I thought you was talking about marriage. No, no, no. This ain't no jagged edge. We ain't That's at the altar. Saying. We ain't getting no... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> None of that. I was like, this ain't no... Nah. Girl- we're not doing none of that dance that you're talking about. All right, all right, all this right. is not related to that. Completing the task, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, for sure. When Irish eyes are smiling, Kyle, <laughs> the whole world you know? is smiling with you. <clears throat> now, since we got that out the way, I see your immediate reaction. That is not where I'm going, so we're just going to move you away from that right there. <laughs> When I think of tying the knot, I'm thinking back in particular to my mural painting days, right? Now, although my painting days were brief, the work I was doing was still hard nonetheless. Now, thinking back specifically to building and taking apart hanging scaffolding, right? When you look at the mural painters and those large walls and those large buildings, you see the stage that's hanging and you see the wires that's supporting it. Those are the kind of things that I would build and take apart on a regular basis, right? Now, depending on how high up we were, we often had to tie knots for equipment to lower it up or to lower it down to the next level of where it needed to be. Now, a lot of the infrastructure that we used to build these rigs, it was metal, it was iron, it was steel, it was braided wires, it's etc. Like, you need to wear gloves to avoid breaking the skin, a finger jam, all of those viable options are something that could happen as a result of doing this work. I'm painting this picture because I'm thinking about the power in the knot itself, right? Now, a knot in context... It just restricts movement. When there's a knot in something, there's no more movement taking place. There's a a break. There's a stop. That restriction could be for your own safety and well-being or someone else's, right? Now, in my case, the tautness of my knot was the small price to pay for either a smooth transition or some bodily harm to me or somebody else when I'm working with this equipment, right? Much like that other tie in a knot if it wasn't on your P's and Q's. I get it. Crossing my T's, dotting my eyes, bro. I'm <laughs> shooting in the gym. Now, I got to admit, like most people, I never thought about how important tying a knot would be, especially life or death ones, right? Like the only day-to-day knot you see in adulthood is tying your shoes, right? And most of us take the time to tie one good knot <laughs> and slip in and out of that knot. And, or you real comfortable and you rich, rich, and you got some Velcro, some loafs, <laughs> a high-priced mule on, or maybe some Birks, right? But other than that, like, those are the only knots that you have. And when it brought me to this this space, it was like, fam, like, damn, like, tying a knot and closing the loop is some real shit. Like, we think of it as uh, uh, something very trivial as just tying a shoe every day. But in real life, when you take that in context of like knots in your body, right? When you have worked out and now you have a sore spot, there's a knot in your musculature that you need to relieve, right? So it just took me down this whole wide world line of thinking of like, damn, that's crazy, right? Now, I'm taking that into my yoga class this week, uh, I gave people, you know, the usual talk about, hey, Take this time to, you know, sink into yourself, let whatever you need to go for the week, blah, blah, blah. Now, faithful listeners of the show will know that I create a playlist every week, Tone, you know, and when I create this playlist, 
it really is just the music that I find naturally, songs and sounds that I like, that I enjoy. But oftentimes I would give that playlist, you know, a nice little catchy name, excuse me, whatever came to mind that week. It would be something of the sort, but like, oh, all right, this is the name for that playlist. In the midst of me searching for the name of this playlist, I came upon this idea of like, you got to do more than try. Right. Especially with tying it back to like a knot, like you can't try to tie a knot. You got to tie it and you got to know what knot you're tying. There's a hitch knot. There's a clover hitch. There's all these different things that have been studied and have been proven to work that aren't just crisscross applesauce. I got to go ahead and tie my shoe. Like think of how many times your shoestring and came untied and you now walking on your laces or they get dirty. Now you're looking like a poop putt. You know what I'm saying? We ain't got to go down that line, but you get where I'm coming from. Right. Sure. Jumping back into this playlist. So the playlist, as I mentioned, the first title in my mind was Do More Than Try. So after I give the title, I give a subtitle for context so people can at least have an idea of where my mind was. So I'm like, all right, this equation in my mind is failure plus blank equals success. I'm trying to fill in this blank. And then the blank, I'm like, I want to put like constant improvement, but that's too long. It doesn't fit. It doesn't look right. Like what's the word for constant improvement? And then a word came to me. Like I wasn't searching for it. It just kind of popped up. And the word is called Kaizen, right? Kaizen is a Japanese word. It's a compound word of two words coming together that mean good change or improvement. However, Kaizen has come to mean continuous improvement through its association with lean mythology and principles, right? So this is a whole Japanese principle I stumbled upon just trying to make this playlist. And I was like, damn, like who knew there was a word for something that I wanted to describe that is in a whole nother culture, but is of that same sentiment that I'm looking for. And that's kind of where the closing the loop, the tying and knot came to me this week, brother tone. Okay. I, I don't know if you ever raised the bar like that, but damn it. I just raised it, brother. <laughs> I appreciate you raising your own bar, man. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Now, shooting that right back to you, brother, I'm going to give you this diagram and these words right here. When you think of Kazin and you see this before you, what can you speak on of continuous improvement in your life? I think life is, it's a life principle. So in every area of life, I would hope to have the opportunity to be in the pursuit of continuous improvement. That is something that, I think really get you to what the purpose of this whole thing is supposed to mean. If you feel content in every area, you kind of stop growing. If you stop growing, you stop living in a lot of measurable ways. So I, I really do think that that kind of ties into nearly every principle. Uh, you said it ties in? Ties in. See what yeah, I did there? Yeah. See the ah, The Kaizen and See? Tyson. Ah, yeah. <laughs> You was getting a little uh, elevated as you was doing this research as well. <laughs> Listen, brother, you know, the greens just took me closer up. I like it. <laughs> I was doing a deep dive into it and it it just kind of all came together. Right. And I think a lot of times we take for granted those moments and we brush it off as like, oh, that's how it's supposed to be. It's like, no, nah, it, it was steps that went into this to allow for a moment like we talked about earlier, like being open in reception to the things that you need and having the verbiage to articulate exactly what it is you need in that moment. And that's what will yield that continuous improvement and to actually live life as you just alluded to, man. Like it's a lot of people out here that aren't living. They just exist. They're just breathing. They're just taking up space and they're not doing it intentionally. They're just going in the day to day in the same rigmarole. And I can't live like that, man. Why do you think they do live like that? You think that's by choice? It's a lot easier to be a herd, to be herded in sheep than it is to go the unbeaten path, right? Like to to be the black sheep, you got to know consciously and make decisions to be that. You can't just be herded and mixed in with everybody else and fall in with the crowd and just get caught up in the the I would just say a, a lower vibration than most, right? Like cuz in order to 
make that change, you have to vibrate on a higher frequency, right? So the lower vibration is there. It's accessible. It's easy. It's cheap. It's, it's the dollar pizza. It's the McDonald's. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's the things that are easy to attain. It's the fruit that's on the ground that's not on a tree that you got to climb to get. Like, you got to raise your vibration in order to achieve the better quality things in life. Yeah, I could I could adhere to that, and I could definitely understand that. And I still think that I don't know if I would come across people who would elect to live bad. Like, if you gave them that as an option. Hey, do you want to live in a low vibration? If you said that to somebody, how many people would choose that as a choice? I think... Some people would, but there's also people that would have friction against that. There's some it, just hearing the fact that this is a different state, right? But yeah. you have to so to even be able to observe that there's different options, you have to know about those different options. So I do, I do think there's, I guess at least I have some some grace for people who are in that position who might not even know that it does exist, you know. Um, and yeah, man, I, I definitely champion the pursuit of tying it all together. And hopefully we continue to help people understand that life process. You're looking for improvement everywhere. Improvement everywhere. Continuous improvement is what we're really striving for. And it uh, sounds like you're hopeful for something, Tony, as well, we wrap up that Raising the Bar segment. I'm going to relax before I get hopeful, Kyle. Sounds like we're going to relax <laughs> first. <laughs> Pardon me for, no doubt. for jumping over your relaxation. So, Brother Tone, tell them how you was relaxing responsibly this week. Man, I got a chance to pull up to a record store, bro. Okay. You know uh, Black Gold out in Brooklyn? I don't, actually. On Court Street. Definitely, it's a coffee shop, and it has a record store in the back of it. I've probably been past it, but haven't been in there in a long time. Man, so I just was riding around because we've had a string of nicer days. Yeah. Got a chance to catch some good... You know, coffee and just follow through a couple of different records. I always like going into a record store and just picking up something by the cover by itself and just like, all right, this cover looks crazy. I don't even know what this is. Let me just throw this on and see where it goes. It's the best way to buy a vinyl. And that's kind of where I was just getting lost in uh, the nostalgia of the whole process, but then also just in like, yo, cover art used to be some real crazy out of this world. It was real artists that did it. And one of the famous uh, people that studied typography who wrote like, the who not wrote I'm sorry who created the typography for the public the museum not mm-hmm. the cut you she was her start was in creating albums like vinyl art yeah man so I just got lost in like just checking out all of the different types of you know genres and everything else and just seeing what people was putting on there was some real trippy kind of you know art sometimes some of it is a little too <clears throat> left field but at the end of the it day it had to be thought provoking yeah it definitely makes you have to I have to physically want to pick this up because it's like what yeah <laughs> what's happening right now I mean if you riding through the desert on a horse with no name see there we go you know what I mean In you kind of you need different artwork to depict what that song is going to make you feel like <laughs> you get what you're picking up what I'm putting down I'm waiting for the organic thug yacht rock man I'm looking forward to it bro it's coming man <laughs> how was you relaxing this week man uh I told you, it's been a hectic week. I'm juror number five. I can't forget that. But in the midst of my lunch break, I've had the time to be downtown and explore. Now, for context, the place that I'm serving jury duty is, let's say, a three-block radius of where my college dorm room was in undergrad, Mm -hmm. right? Like, it's downtown. I went to college downtown. Where I'm serving is downtown. So... I'm now inhabiting this spot that I first was in in 2009. So we're talking, there's been a 15 year gap of this time when I used to live down here. And now I'm only down here because of jury duty. In that time, Brooklyn has got a lot taller, right? Like the, the stores have changed places that I used to buy alcohol from underage you get what i'm saying like the coming of age stories the views and opinions of kyle jones like we're we're (laughs) past the statute of limitations at this point right you know but like not you being a juror for like a week and a half and you know jurisprudence all of a sudden (laughs) my legal jargon is a1 you know what i'm saying i can go to bat with anybody right now you know motion to move this conversation forward now i say all this and lay this out because Just imagine growing up somewhere and then having the having to revisit that space and that space be completely different. And I'm talking like the highest possible imagination like, oh, skyscraper here. We've now got coffee shops. We've got gyms. We've got 
shopping places, there's restaurants, there's a whole new life and culture in this space that I knew completely differently. Like the space that I got my very first tattoo in was a jewelry store, pawn shop slash tattoo shop. Then the tattoo space was in the bottom of that place, like in the basement. That space is still there. It's still there, thankfully, but it's now just like a tattoo. Or no, it's no longer a tattoo space. It's just pawn shop and jewelry shop now. There's a lot of questions to follow that up, but I'm just let you keep cooking. I say all that to say <laughs> that I was relaxed because I was uneasy, right? I was uneasy and seeing all of this change before my eyes, seeing all of these restaurants, the... <laughs> The buildings have changed so drastically, but somehow the people haven't, which is interesting to me, right? Like the people downtown Brooklyn specifically are very reflective of what the entire Brooklyn looks like. Because you get a little bit of everybody. There's NYU students. You get kids from high school. You get everybody that's caught up in the court system. You get the people working retail. You get the people that live down there. Much like how you talked about, uh, you know, being a member of a gym allows you access into a variety of different people. Like, that's what I felt like being downtown. So I was uneasy in that moment, but relaxed in the memories that I had. Uh, I went to go to, to Five Guys, get a burger the other day. I'm walking past Five Guys. It's like, fam, I seen George Clinton perform down here randomly on like a Wednesday. Like it was the funkiest Wednesday I ever had. It's just straight <laughs> soul music happening two steps away from Five Guys. But like now it's a, a courtyard and a whole different development than it was back then but like finding my long-winded relaxation <laughs> and the memories that i'm gonna hold to and just be that old man of like i remember back in the day that's really what it's given <laughs> when this used to look like that it's like Kyle, it you, ain't that no more you have lived through your first wave of gentrification <laughs> i don't like, <laughs> it's it. like let me tell you at all for all the things that you're describing oh i know i remember when those things got put there <laughs> yeah i know i know i and i was an early adapter a pioneer of gentrification if you will yeah, like you it were, started with me you were the you were the original gentrifier. i was the original <laughs> But now I don't like what came after that door. I thought I closed the door on that chapter of my life. I didn't know it stayed open. Yeah, man, you you have lived long enough to see it come right back around full circle. This whole thing is a big cycle, my guy. It's nothing worse than seeing the college you went to who changed their mascot and new kids in that logo and you still paying school loans. Like, that's my motherfucking sweatshirt. <laughs> Give Take it to that me off. right now. <laughs> Give me that right now. You ain't no goddamn shark. And they can't. We blackbirds. <laughs> uh -huh. And they can't even take you to bookings like they used to because they knocked that building down to sell that off. So they're going to take you, you somewhere else. You out the city. <laughs> You're not staying here. For sure. You in and out with it, you know? Side tangent. Before we exit, right? I'm, I'm just going to speak on the what I see in this jury duty process. There's nothing more disturbing than having to go through a metal detector every day, right? <laughs> like, it's just, just let that contextually go through your mind. It's like, I have to go through this metal detector every single day on some, like, what type of radiation am I going through? Like, that's nuts. And then to see criminals allegedly come in in handcuffs, shackled, hand to feet, like, and we all got to ride the same elevator, it just seems a little off, you know? <laughs> Kyle, I'm going to say one you clearly haven't been to Roosevelt Field Mall and the, the no, movie theaters that was out there. Not at all. Not at <laughs> it's just like, Despite being in Baltimore, I went to good schools, and my school never, <laughs> never had, had a, all a metal detector. In like, middle school, we had to see through book bags, you know what I'm saying? Like, we had to see what she was bringing in, but we never went as far as metal detectors in my day. I know New Yorkers, that's something y'all lived through. And it was like, and imagine why they call it the pipeline, my man. I was like, yeah, you just get used to it by this point. Yes, <laughs> no. It's just a regular thing. It's not something that I'm used to, and I will not act like it is. Hey, we grew up in a different time. Again, I said, you have seen the second wave <laughs> of change. So it sounds like you're hopeful there, Tony. What are you I'm hopeful, hopeful for? I'm hopeful for this change to continue to go forward, Kyle. <laughs> really? Sam Cook style. You know yeah. what I'm saying? A change is going to come. Yeah, it's getting a little sketchy out there in the streets. You know, people have been a little nervous about getting on the trains, which just sounds like it's getting real 90s out there in the streets. <laughs> people are looking for 90s stuff to stop happening, which I told you it would. Sam. 
there have been murders I, <laughs> again on stops that I frequent. You're saying not subway stuff that I just ride past like nothing happened. It's like yo, somebody got smoked here yesterday. Yo, <laughs> word. All right, you. Are, I'm gonna sip my coffee. And to me, you're saying sub- stand clear of the closing doors, please. You're saying subway stuff happened on the subway. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Because <laughs> like, again. This ain't the first wave of this that I have seen. You brought it up. Have you seen the video? Please tell no, me. No, I'm it's not been looking online. at no damn video for that, man. Man, I ain't going to dive into I, it too much. I, I but ain't doing it. I ain't it doing was, it with you. It was crazy. It was very, like, iPhone. Like, think of uh, Blair Witch Project. Like, remember when that first came out? And so you- I'm hopeful for, <laughs> like I said, days to be better than whatever Kyle was attempting to describe that he will not describe. Hey, Amen. <laughs> we going to cut that off. <laughs> like, stop that right there. And hopefully, you know, everybody. I was just talking point of view. But yes, I hear safe, you. you know, I'm hopeful that, you know, people stay safe with these outdoor workouts, too, man. Because, again, a lot of people doing a lot of stuff. Yeah. And, uh. When so you, you do saying too you much, need car jiu-jitsu is what you You saying. might need some car jiu-jitsu. You might <laughs> See how it makes sense now. You might need to get a cameraman. Don't try to get the selfie off at the edge of the cliff. That's not the way to do it. You know? You need a hands-free camera. You got it. I've seen drones that they could take out, hover around you, but just Like again, how the police got a body cam, you need one of those. You know, just just be alert to what's going on. Just know the time and date so you can timestamp everything for the record, you know, Your Honor. There we go. I like how you gonna get your uh, you trying to get ice ice cube or ice tea out the box. That's really what you get. It was body we saw over there. <laughs> what kind of monster would do this? <laughs> this is, that's what you you aiming for. <laughs> I can do those lines, Sam. Those lines are hard. <laughs> yeah, we got a call. You was a perv. <laughs> Be like what, fam? Like that's that's all your lines, ice tea. Come on, man. Kyle, where can <laughs> the good people out there reach us at if they wanted to get? In contact with the good folks over here at Off the Strength or at Newsstand Studio. Man, if you are in the greatest city in the world, that is New York City, come on down to Rockefeller Center where you can visit Newsstand Studios and you can see us live and direct at the block of the rock. If you can't make it in, visit Instagram at Rockefeller Center or Twitter at Rock Center NYC. That's right, folks. And again, we are here live at Newsstand Studios. This is Off the Strength. Uh, produced in association with Bryant Perkins and I did that production. Brother Jones, you got anything else you want to put out there for the people? <sighs> Wash your hands. It's still it's still cold and flu season. We just getting out of it into the spring. Yeah, man. No open mouth cough, so you get open neck slap. All right. Once again, it's been another fantastic episode of Off the Strength. I'm a trainer called Tony. KR Jones. Peace and much love out there. Until next time, we'll see you soon. Peace. What's good, everybody? I'm a trainer called Tony, and I am here from the infamous Off The Strength Podcast asking you today, listeners, viewers, wherever you may be, to please like, listen, and subscribe to our podcast. This is how we're going to continue to be able to deliver you the best goddamn wellness information out here. So if you want to keep hearing this and you want us to keep growing, you are a part of this show just as much as anything else. So please go to offthestrength.com. Make sure you check out our blogs. Make sure you check us out on IG. And if you're hearing this voice and you didn't hit that subscribe button, know that Kyle is going to come looking for you. You got that right.